Welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah. This is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. How are you? Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's a couple days past Valentine's Day right now. Um, I have a little bit of yarny things to talk to you about, some life updates. There's just a lot going on right now. <laughs> um, if you hear a dull roar in the background, that is because the baby is sleeping um, and the monitor volume is turned up a little bit because she was sick last night, um, which I will get into in a minute, but I just want to be able to hear her. It's important to me. So if you're looking for me anywhere in the interweb, you can find me as The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram and Facebook and The Cozy Cottage on Ravelry. And then if you have anything to say about the podcast and specifically, or you just want to chat, please shoot me an email at The Cozy Cottage Crochet at gmail.com. That is the best way to get a hold of me. Grab your beverage of choice. <laughs> Mine is a leftover blue Gatorade from the fridge. It sits in my tummy better than water at the moment. Although I'm almost out of it, so I will be drinking water shortly. And let's get started. Before we jump into the yarning, or <laughs> lack thereof, I I'm excited to share that I actually have a sponsor for this episode. And when I say that, typically the next words that follow are, it's Ana Luisa Jewelry. And it totally is exactly Ana Luisa Jewelry. They have been a sponsor of this podcast for like four years in a row, usually around Thanksgiving time, but they're running a special campaign and they asked if I wanted to participate. And I said, of course, because I love your stuff. So I want to show it to you. This is their special campaign. It is their Elements necklaces and they have five of these I think. This one is earth. It is just so pretty. This is the earth pendant. It's got flowers and ferns and a little mushroom and they have some for every element and you can so it's like a gold little disc and I don't know if it's showing up very well on camera but you can see there's like little sparkly stars in the sky as well. It's just really pretty and they sent me also two other pieces. One which is this ring you can see I have blue paint all over my hand. I'm not like <laughs> turning spotted or anything like that. I have blue paint on my hand because I will tell you in a minute why. And these little flower earrings. And I have said this every time that they have shown sent jewelry to me. I love their pieces for many reasons. One, because they're beautiful. I wear them myself every day. Um, for example, this ring right here is one that they sent me years ago and I wear it all the time. Um, but when they first contacted me all those years ago, I like grilled them on like environmental sustainability and this is actually something that they care about because it really bothers me like some of the mining practices and some of the labor practices that some of these companies use. And so they send the package in all recyclable materials. It comes in a little cardboard box. And then on the inside of the box, it says that they are carbon and water neutral and you can scan the little QR code to find out more. And then the jewelry comes on little cardboard um, pieces inside a little cloth envelope. So they only use recycled gold and that makes me really happy <laughs> because I just, just bothers me some of the wastefulness and some of the practices that are used by other companies. And so I personally highly recommend and really enjoy their jewelry i wear it all the time like i said i have been wearing these since they came in the mail um, and i have several pairs of their stud earrings that i rotate through all the time and this is just so pretty i love the little elements necklaces and they have one i'm sure they have one to fit every personality this one even though earth is not necessarily like i don't want to touch the earth <laughs> By that, I mean, I don't want to dig my fingers into the earth and get dirty, um, but that that just spoke to me. The little flower and the fern and the mushroom. Oh, look, paint on this arm too. <laughs> so I have a coupon code for 20% off if you use the coupon code that I will list on the screen right here and that I will put in the drop down below. Just click the link. Make sure you click the link below specifically so that it, the coupon code will apply and then use that coupon code at the checkout. You can get 20% off. Um, it's already past Valentine's Day, obviously, but like treat yourself. <laughs> and also Mother's Day is coming up and also Easter. And also who cares? Do you need a reason to spoil yourself? No, you do not. That is something I'm learning as an adult. 
So yeah, I really love it. I'm really, really happy to work with them again. I'm really happy they sent me another email and I know some of you have purchased their things for gifts and other things like that and have been really, really delighted with the results. And so I hope that you will again. And that is the end of my spiel. <laughs> I just love them. Okay, let's talk, shall we? I don't think I have ever done as little yarning as I'm about to show you. The first major thing you need to know is I have not picked up a crochet hook in two weeks. Not a single one. Um, I have knit a very tiny amount on three projects. Two pairs of socks and a sweater. I have knit a little bit. All of this has been done a week prior to this week. I have not touched knitting needles this week at all. Um, mostly because we have been painting cabinets. I've been really sick and we have been getting ready for our floors to be replaced in two weeks, which is a nightmare. But yes, this is why I'm covered in blue paint because we were painting cabinets last night. So there's a lot going on. I have been feeling really, really sick, but everything is okay with the baby. As far as we know, we had our appointment and the baby is still there, still growing. This is officially week 10. Week 10? This is week, now I don't even know. <laughs> I was so set. I wanna say the appointment we had in week nine, and so this must be the start of week 10 because the appointment was a week ago. Um, yeah, that's right, because next week is week 11 and then we have an appointment at week 12. So it's still really early, but the baby is still growing. I was really relieved to have the ultrasound appointment at week nine. Um, just It just gave me such peace of mind and we are going to have another ultrasound in week 12. So I will get to see it again, which I am very, very happy about. I have been alternating being super duper sick with being barely alive. And Nova, the poor thing, threw up in her, like all over her crib last night. And she's been super fussy this morning. She hasn't thrown up again. She doesn't have a fever. So I think it was just dinner disagreed with her. I don't really think she has a stomach bug because she has been eating a little bit and drinking some Pedialyte and it stayed down. But oh, the poor thing, I feel so bad. Throwing up is the worst, isn't it? So let's, whoops. <laughs> trying to reach my I'm trying to decide where to start it is I don't know that I've ever recorded an episode on the cozy cottage podcast channel where I haven't picked up a crochet hook I just haven't I don't know I not only am exhausted my hands have been hurting and I just haven't wanted to I haven't had the energy the only time that I would be able to crochet would be in the evening and instead I have been sleeping or painting cabinets. <laughs> Literally, Nova skipped a nap on Tuesday this week. She was in bed at six. I was in bed at 6.30. I was so, so, so tired. I'm really looking forward to the first trimester being over so that I can maybe be a person again. Cause when she goes down to sleep for her nap, I also go to sleep immediately. And it's just been rough, it's been rough. So the small amount of knitting that has been done I'm gonna show you, this was done, it was all done a week ago, not a single stitch has been worked this week, but you know, if I put even one stitch on something, it's going in the podcast. I had one afternoon, almost two weeks ago, in fact, I think it may have been the afternoon that I recorded the podcast last time, um, which would have been Wednesday, Wednesday, I think, two weeks ago where Nova was just really content to play by herself and I kind of sat on the floor next to her and knit a little bit while she played and I knit almost a whole inch on this Christmas sock. Yes, my Christmas sock, the first one is still not completed. <laughs> this is Christmas yarn. It is the colorway of Very Merry Knit Miss from Honeybee Knits and I'm just making my standard sock recipe for me at the moment, which is I did cast on 64 stitches I did 15 rounds of two by two ribbing. Then I worked the whole stockinette cuff until the top to here was six inches. I put in a fish lips kiss heel, and now I'm working down the foot, which I will do for about five and a half, five and five eighths inches maybe. And then I will do the rounded toe from Nina's two at a time vanilla sock recipe. 
And yeah, I knit up one whole inch on this sock. And slightly more than that on the other pair of socks. And the reason I knit slightly more than that is because Saturday, two weeks ago, I went to an ordination council for a friend of mine and it was almost two hours long and I knit most of the time I was there. So I knit from here all the way to here, which is very exciting. So it, an ordination council is basically if you are a pastor or you're training to be a pastor or you're trying to work um, in a church and you want to be ordained. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, a friend of mine dropped by some food for us, which was so nice. So nice. I am going to sit in the refrigerator so we can eat it later. Anyways, what I was saying is um, if you are part of a church and you're trying to be ordained, you there's all kinds of processes. So she's already been through her church's process, but the last step was an ordination council where leaders from her church and from the people that know her and then a couple of community other pastors were invited that are friends with her and know her so I got an invite we basically just get to like ask her questions etc and I knit on this sock while I was there I, this is the only time I've touched this sock <laughs> one time in the last two weeks got all of this done and I feel like I'm halfway through the foot I'd say it's a reasonable goal that I would get the this sock finished by next time, but probably not reasonable. It is really pretty, really pretty. I'm really happy with this sock. This yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners in the colorway flowers, sunflowers, something, something, something. I can swear it said on here. Wildflower. That's what it looks like. And it is a was sent to me by my lovely friend Jen who lives in the UK and I'm making socks out of it because it's delightful. The third and final project that I have put a tiny bit of work onto is I put a couple of rows onto my mix and match cardigan and by a couple of rows I mean three. This is where I was last time and this is where I am now. I put three rows on my mix and match cardi it's very delightful. It is very hot pink. This is a pattern by Mina Phillips, who is the knitting expat. Um, and this yarn is 100% superwash merino yarn, dyed by my friend Maria, who does not dye yarn anymore, but she dyed me these electric, electric hot pink yarns. And I love them intensely. And so yeah, I put three entire rows that is the extent of my knitting. Two and a half, possibly three inches on one sock foot, one inch on another sock foot, and three rows on a sweater. Wow. Have I ever gone through yarn content this quickly? I don't think so. It's truly mind blowing. It's like, what is even happening? I'll tell you what's happening. <laughs> what is that comedian? I can't think of his name, but he like wears a hat and he's like, I tell you what. And that's what I felt like saying. I did not start a project, but I did wind yarn for a project that I haven't started. And it is the CC's wool yarn that's going to be the second version of my super bulky grandpa cardigan that I felted. We've gone through this woes many times, so I just wanted to do the leftovers from the other ball. I have all four. Oh no, that's a leftover too. So I ordered three new skeins of this yarn, which I did wind. And now I've thought about casting this on a couple of times, but what I need to do first is go through this pattern because I, you know, regraded the whole pattern. <laughs> I need to go through and make sure that the, these instructions for the yoke are okay because I didn't make very clear notes there. So I may have to redo that math, which means I can't just restart the pattern, which is kind of sad, but I, at the time, was not planning on needing to make another one. So can you really blame me? No, I don't think so. So yes, it 
was very sad indeed, but I have wound the yarn, so perhaps someday, when I have the motivation, I will be able to sit down and start it. I need to print off a new um, copy of the pattern so I can make new notes. The other thing I wanted to show you is something that came in the mail, and this is from Studio Knit Boop, who I followed her on Instagram for a really, really, really long time. And they were having some car troubles, so she had like a shop sale. And I have always wanted to buy a stitch marker from her and just never, never did. And I finally was like, okay, we, we're gonna do it. So I ordered them and then they came in about a month later. And they're so cute. They're like little conversation hearts and a little dancing sheepy. Conversation hearts I thought would be perfect for Valentine's Day. Even though Valentine's Day has passed already. They're actually, if you look closely, two colors. They're purple and pink which is cute. And then this little guy, just, I mean, of course it's not focusing very well, but I love him and I love the round clasps like that. It's probably my, one of my favorite types of stitch marker. So I love them. I am glad that I finally was able to support her. And it was delightful to have them show up in the mail. That was too much almost, <laughs> but it's empty now. <laughs> so, I don't know how long I will have until this one wakes up. Let's chat, shall we? <laughs> this baby has had a tough week. On Monday and Tuesday, she did not take a nap because she's getting another tooth. And the doctor said when we went for her 12th or her two year appointment that all four of her molars were about to come in. So that was really bothering her. It finally popped out. Yesterday, she had a great day. She took a nap, no problem. She ate dinner, she was happy as a clam. She went to bed and sometime in the night threw up everywhere. Um, twice, did not cry. And I don't understand. Like, is this happened to you? Has your baby like thrown up in the crib and not cried about it? Because I went in there in the morning and I had heard her coughing a little bit in the night, which is probably when she threw up. Um, but I looked at her on the monitor and I didn't really see anything. Like she was still laying down and I didn't see like, a, I didn't see anything. So I was like, okay, but she didn't cry. And I wish I would have gone in and checked on her because she was sleeping in a throw up. And when I went in there this morning, she was like, mama, oh no, you pooped in crib. And I was like, honey, that's not poop. She's like, you poop in your mouth. And I was like, it's called throw up. You threw up. And it looks like she just threw up her dinner from last night. And she's eaten everything that we had for dinner last night before. So it's either something didn't agree with her or she had some kind of little bug, but I don't think she had a bug because she has not had a fever all day. Um, she doesn't have any fever. She has not thrown up again. I gave her a little Pedialyte and she's been like nibbling on a few pretzels and things and keeping that down just fine. But she has been so unhappy this morning. We, she asked to snuggle, which is very unlike her. She, normally she's like, don't touch me. <laughs> and she's like, snuggle, mama, snuggle. And so we sat on the couch and watched Doc McStuffins all morning. Except for I had a meeting that I had to go to and she had to come with me. And I've had no childcare this week. And the whole time we were at the meeting, she, I could tell she didn't feel good. She said her tummy hurt. She did okay. Um, but several times she like tugged on me and was like, go home, go home, please go home. And I was like, in a minute, baby, as soon as I can get out of here, we will go home. Um, so we did that. She's sleeping. She was out like a light. Uh, within 10 minutes of me putting her down for her nap. And that was about an hour and a half ago. So hopefully she sleeps two hours, two and a half hours and like gets a little recovery. So that was fun. That's only the second time she's thrown up in her life. One time was she had a reaction to some medicine that we gave her and it like immediately came out with a whole bottle full of milk. So it was like, it was a throw up, but it was more of like a, it just happened immediately. It wasn't like it came with a stomach ache. And I feel so bad for her tiny tummy. And so bad for me. 
That's like not your favorite thing to wake up to. I wish you would have cried. <sighs> I wish you would have cried because I would have gone and like we would have cleaned her up in the middle of the night. She wouldn't have been sleeping. I don't know. I feel terrible that she slept in that all night. Or not all night, however long it was. Well, several hours. Um, so yeah, the first thing I got to do this morning was clean, scrub, throw up out of pajamas, sleep sack, stuffed animals, sheets, mattress pad, and the wall. <laughs> so that was very delightful. And then I cleaned up the baby and then I had to give the baby a bath. She did not like the bath, so I gave her to her really fast, but I wish I would have made her stay in there longer because I feel like her hair does not smell good still, even though I washed it. So that's been today. <laughs> day in the life of a parent so when I stopped the video for a second ago um one of my friends like a week or two ago was like hey um I want to bring you food one day and I was like okay sure and then promptly forgot about it and then he texted me this morning and was like can I bring you food and I was like honestly today I don't know what your schedule is today but today would be the most amazing time in the world to bring food because we're on the struggle bus today and he did, he brought food from Dickie's barbecue and lots of pickles, which I want because I'm pregnant. I want them anyways, but I extra want them when I'm pregnant. So that was really, really nice of him. Um, I have been really sick, like week, week 10, I guess, is when all of your hormones start peaking <laughs> for the first trimester. So that's like the peak of the first trimester. I the nausea has been next level. Thankfully, I can still eat. So that is still a big improvement over when I was pregnant with Nova. And the doctor, I complained about it and she prescribed me Zofran, which has been a lifesaver. I have to be really careful with the Zofran because it can cause constipation, severe, <laughs> which causes its own set of problems. So I have taken, I try to take only a half of one and I try not to take it more than two days in a row. So today I haven't taken one and I'm okay. My stomach is definitely not happy, but I think I can survive today. But yesterday I took one. Tuesday was, oh my gosh, the worst day. Nova was in bed at six and I was in bed at 6.30 and I slept all night. Because I just, uh, growing a human is really hard. And growing a human with a toddler around is even harder. And this week specifically, last week wasn't so bad uh, because I had childcare. <laughs> so I had three hours in the morning and one day that I felt really, really awful. I literally spent the whole time in bed. I just like took a sick day. This week, the babysitter is out of town all week. So it's been me and Nova every day until she goes to bed. And then I try to go to bed except Monday and Tuesday, she didn't nap because she was teething. So it's like, I feel like I understand, you know when a baby gets so tired, they're like overtired and they can just cry and you can tell their brain is on fire. That's what I feel like. Like if I don't get a nap when she gets a nap, I cannot make it to bedtime. I can't, I can't physically do it. I already took one actually. She went down and I laid down for 45 minutes and then I got up because I knew he was gonna be bringing food and also I wanted to record a podcast. I should be okay. So it's just been, I don't know how to stay at home parents with kids running around and pregnancy sickness. I don't know how you deal with it because it has been a heck of a week this week, but it's Thursday. It's almost over. <laughs> it's almost over. My mom's coming tonight, which means that I'm just going to watch her in the morning and my babysitter will be back on Monday, except listen to this news. We had scheduled our floors to get replaced. And I feel like I talked about this before, so, you know, feel free to just skip this if you're, like, bored out of your mind. We had a plumbing backup in, like, October, November. In fact, it happened while I was on the podcast. I heard a sound, and I was like, what is that? Hopefully it's nothing. Oh, it was not nothing. Water was coming in everywhere. There was water. It didn't really start coming in until maybe two hours after that. Um, but it, the water came through out through both bathrooms under the tile and then on top of the laminate floor through the wall into the living room under the wall into the hallway and the hallway closet into our room like just water everywhere we got it all cleaned up 
we had people out to inspect and they were like, oh my gosh, the pipe has collapsed <laughs> in your backyard. It has a cave in. This is why the water is not draining. To replace this pipe will be $7,500. And I was like, wow, we don't have that. <sighs> Let alone the floor. Like, <sighs> um, so we called it into insurance. They took months, months to decide what they were gonna do about it. They sent an, an inspector. We had had two video inspections done of the plumbing and estimates. They sent their own plumbing inspector. They did all this stuff. And then randomly they'd sent us a check. They never, they never called or like emailed to be like, yes, we have decided to pay your claim. They just sent a check in the mail <sighs> that appeared and listed in the check is to replace the floors and like the, ban the vanity in the bathroom and some like trim and all of this stuff but not the pipe. Apparently they're not covering the pipe. <laughs> so thankfully it's enough money to replace the floors. We found a place that will replace the floors. Then they will come in and replace them. So we don't have to replace them. We just have to move a lot of furniture um, for a certain amount of money. And then there will be enough money left for us to fix half of the pipe um, because we're getting this room built onto our house also starting in two weeks <laughs> the last week in february like the 27th is when the flooring is supposed to start being replaced and the outside work construction on the addition is supposed to happen <sighs> and they ha are building on top of half of this pipe so included in the addition is half of the pipe being replaced so we're like okay that's like three grand right there so we're gonna have those people that plumber who is already going to be digging up the backyard replaced the whole thing with PVC so we can hopefully not think about this ever again. <laughs> so their fingers crossed will be just enough money to replace the entire pipe that caused the problem and all of the flooring in our house, which is really delightful. The flooring in our house is laminate, but it's really cheap laminate. It has not, we have only lived here six years and it laminate should last like 15 years. It is warped in some places, it's chipped in some places, the boards are like coming up a little bit. And then the water on top of that was just, <sighs> it totally made, like when I'm vacuuming, the vacuum's like, <laughs> cause I can't, it's like hitting boards that are popping up because of the water. So it's really exciting that we're getting the floors replaced, but I had scheduled the floors to be replaced the last week in February because we were gonna have childcare that, there's almost nothing going on that week and we we're gonna have childcare. So this has been scheduled for several weeks now. And then my babysitter texted me and was like, oh, I got my days mixed up. I'm not gonna be available on Monday or Tuesday that week. And I was like, oh, of course you're not. Like truly, of course. Why would you be? <laughs> so I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with Nova while they are literally ripping up the floor in our house and replacing it, it's gonna be super loud and she doesn't do well with loud or with strangers. And I can't leave because we have to be moving stuff in there. So it's gonna be real exciting. I doubt she's gonna nap those days, which means neither will I. I just, I don't know what to do about this. There's nothing, there's nothing that can be done other than my gosh, <laughs> what a life we're having. So that is the story of why we are painting our cabinets because everything is brown at the moment. So the floor is like kind of a light brown laminate and the cabinets in the kitchen, the kitchen is a really a fairly big kitchen, which is like a celebrate, a celebrating point, <laughs> a selling point <laughs> for this house. I guess it's also a celebrating point, but they're like really cheap Ikea cabinets. They're not super nice, but they're also brown, like a light brown, it's almost like this color actually. And then the floor is kind of like, a little darker than this. The brown cabinets, we're getting gray floors because I've always wanted that kind of color scheme. Um, they just do not, they're not gonna go. So we're painting the cabinets blue, which is fine, but there's a lot of cabinets. And because they're cheap Ikea cabinets, you can't just paint them. You have to paint them. They require like three coats, in some places four coats of paint to cover it up nicely. And it has to be done because I do not want to get paint all over our beautiful floors. Who cares about these floors? <laughs> They're getting ripped out in one and a half weeks. 
So we have all of the bottom cabinets painted and like one of the cabinets on the top, but it takes so many coats. So just as I'm working on it every night this week, Monday, Tuesday night, he was working on it just by himself. I couldn't do anything. I was so tired. In fact, he might have started Sunday night. Um, and then last night I helped him for about an hour, hour and a half before I had to go to bed because I had expired. And then he stayed up until like 10 p.m. trying to paint cabinets. So we're just doing that every night this week and probably some of next week so that we can get it painted so that they can, it's, that's why I'm covered in <laughs> blue paint. The paint on my hands has mostly come off just from washing them and general use, but I guess I haven't washed my arm except in the shower this morning, so it didn't come off. So yeah, we did that last night and then Nova threw up <laughs> and then Nova's been unhappy and it's just been a lot going on on top of being pregnant and hating everything. But the baby is growing, which I'm really, really thankful about. And I just keep saying to myself, it's gonna be worth it. We can get through this one day. We've definitely had a few meltdowns, but I'm trying to keep it together. It's, I've decided it's okay if I don't keep it together. We're just gonna make it through these next few months. We're gonna make it through the three or four months when I can't sleep in our bedroom. <sighs> We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. And then it will be worth it because once that room is added onto our house and everything is put where it's supposed to be, I will have a place, to, not only will I have a nursery to put this baby in when it grows, we will have a room big enough to have a bassinet for the baby. Not a foldy plastic travel one, a real bassinet next to the bed um, with maybe a rocking chair next to it, which I can't, it just sounds so wonderful. It sounds so wonderful. And it will be worth it. The floors are gonna look great. Although the packing and moving furniture is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful when it's done. Um, and I'm, it's going to be like a brand new house, essentially. To get all new flooring and new cabinets, like the whole color scheme is going to change entirely. And then when the addition is done, I'm hoping we can move our bookshelves out of the living room and put them in what will be my husband's office. And then get some low shelving and put Nova's toys on there in the corner so the corner of the living room will just be for Nova and the new baby to play in and like have adventures and do exciting things. So that's my goal and it feels so far away right now just like when you're 10 weeks pregnant and you have to be 40 weeks pregnant <laughs> before the baby comes out but it will be worth it. I'm trying to take it one day at a time. I'm trying to practice what I preach. I'm trying to rest as much as I can, hence why I've been sleeping anytime Nova's asleep. I'm trying to take it easy. I'm y'all know I'm not good at that. I but I have released the guilt. I I mean I've never recorded a podcast episode where I haven't crocheted something. But I didn't I didn't do it this week. In fact I barely did anything. And I'm just releasing the guilt for that because I know it's when I was pregnant with Nova, that would have stressed me out more. So I feel like this is personal growth, y'all. <laughs> that I, it's just a beautiful testament to how much work I've put in, I think, that I'm kind of releasing that and just realizing like, this is a season and it will be okay. And it's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to say is, if you've made it this far through a lot of yawn, yawn, yarny, non-yarny content, um, I actually would really love to give this necklace to one of you. I think it's really beautiful um, and really special, and I just I would love to share it with one of you. So, if you would like to be entered into the just going to be a random number generator or random comment picker rather for this specific necklace, comment below and. Um, tell me what your favorite flower is. And I, any comment that has your favorite flower in it will be entered into the number generator and I will mail this to someone in the next couple of weeks. I'll draw a winner before I record the next podcast episode. Um, that giveaway, it's, it's a giveaway by me because I'm giving away the necklace 
but it's not it's technically sponsored by Amorisa because they sent me the necklace but I it that was not the um what am I trying to say that wasn't the purpose of them sending me jewelry was for me to do a giveaway um I am doing that because I want to and it's a piece that they sent me and then if you would like to purchase a different one um an elements necklace or a pair of stud earrings or a pair of dangly earrings or a ring or anything like that if anything strikes your fancy for 20 percent off just use the code down below um i know this is like a shorter episode <laughs> i feel like it's gonna be like 35 minutes long but that's all i've got today but i'm so happy to speak with you i'm so happy to virtually see your faces and to know that you're here and i hope I hope you're having a better couple weeks than we are. I hope there's no stomach bug or throwing up in your house. I hope there's no floor replacements and painting cabinets in your house. But next time on the podcast, if I remember, I will show you the cabinets. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to walk away from the light because it's going to get really dark in here. I want to show you what we've done. So here we have the kitchen. You can see this is the color of the cabinets and this is the color of the floor and this is the color we're painting them. Oh, my finger. <laughs> so we've painted these ones, and these ones, and all of these ones. Although some of this down here is going to need a second coat. So we still have to paint all of this, which is a lot, that's a lot. Um, but I really, really, really like the blue. Yeah, I really, really like the blue. It's gonna look really fabulous with our gray floor that's coming in soon. So yes, hopefully didn't make you sick with that trip. <laughs> but that's a little insight into the DIY that's happening in our house. And by the time I record the next podcast episode, the floors may be finished. So then I can show you that as well. I can show you everything all together. So yeah, if you like this ridiculous tiny yarn content episode, give it a thumbs up. Um, also comment, tell me what you're working on. Let me live vicariously through you because I'm not working on anything. And hit subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on new episodes as they go on this channel. And I just appreciate you so much for being here. Bye friends. <laughs>